Hi everyone, welcome to the channel again. Today I'm going to tell you how to turn something like that into something like that. Okay, so what we're looking at now is the fuel panel that I've designed in Cold Draw. Um, as you can see, it's three major pieces. That back piece there is made of black three millimeter acrylic. Um, you can see that the back piece has three millimeter holes placed in it for backlighting LEDs. The middle is an opaque white three millimeter acrylic. Um, its only purpose is to diffuse those LEDs so you don't get hot spots in all the text. And then the front panel is the one that gets painted black and obviously all the text gets um oh, don't want to do that all the text gets engraved into it uh, and then these ones that those three there are clear plastic obviously um, glass and then those are just rings to keep the glass in place so this is obviously for the fuel the hydraulic gauges and fuel gauges will be in these large holes that I'm cutting into them um, and then they just get press fit in the front uh, I won't take you through the gauges themselves because they're a little bit more complicated to make than this um, But anyway, this is just going to be a main panel. So the way I do it is I just um, Open up a one a blank one called it untitled now my laser bed is only Small so I can only I can't cut all of this at once. Um, so we'll do the Black one first basically I copy that I paste it into one called untitled uh, and then I save that as a DXF. So you just go save as uh, DXF. Uh, yes, so I basically use one called Untitled as my workspace. Uh, then all I do is I open up my LaserCAD software. This is LaserCAD version 7.78.10. So this runs my uh, upgraded Chinese K40 laser. I just import that DXF file that I saved. Uh, there it is. Uh, I might rotate it 90 degrees. And there we go. So these are the acrylics that I use. I just get them in A4 sheets because it fits my laser easily. That's the front panel. You can see it's a solid white um, 2 millimeter thick piece. This is for the middle panel. It's a uh, opaque white. You can see it sort of diffuses light. And the back piece is just solid black. Um, Alright, let's run it in the laser. Okay, so here's a quick overview of the laser setup. It's a cheap Chinese K40 that I've upgraded myself. It's got a um, a light object is the company that sells these. It's a digital signal processor, so it's heaps better than the cheap Chinese software. That's what runs that laser kit, laser CAD program. Um, uh, I've also put an air assist pump on it, and look, I used to have a um, I did actually put a Z-axis table so it was powered but I removed it because it made my bed smaller and I realised that I'm only ever cutting the same sort of plastic anyway so I might as well have it at a fixed height. Um, uh, I've also upgraded the laser tube, you can see there's a bit of a PVC housing so the laser is bigger than fits in the machine but it just cuts stuff like a hot knife through butter now. Um, cooling's taken care of by that modified esky down there, well there's that Z-table I was talking about. Uh, got some holes in it and a computer water pump that's pumping um, the water through it. I monitor temperatures with a with a sensor in there. You can see that's 14.4 at the moment, which is sweet. Um, in the summer months, I just fill that with ice and monitor temperatures so it doesn't get too hot. Exhaust goes out the back there through that um, duct taped up vent to a fan on the roof. All right, so the laser is now powered up, so the, the um, software knows that it's there. I can just read the current position. It tells me where the um, laser head is in the machine. So what I just do then is move the part, sorry, move the panel to where the laser head is, and that means I can save material. So rather than having this cut out of the center of an A4 part, I can... Um, probably squeeze two panels out of one piece of A4 plastic. So all I have to do now is push download. It will ask me all the settings, download it to the machine. 
All I have to do now is push start there or start on the machine and it will run it. All right, so we're at the machine. I'll just quickly push the test button and make sure that it's got a fit on the plastic, which it will. Just turn on the air pump. And we'll push start. Alright, so it's finished. See, that took 1 minute and 45 seconds to cut that board. And that's what you end up with. And that's the back of the fuel gauge. Uh, all the marks on it are just uh, residue from the cutting process. Once I clean it up, it'll be smooth, but I'll paint them back black anyway. All right, let's do the next panel. Okay, so to do the front panel, I'm cutting it out of the white and basically I'll cut it out of the white, I'll glue it to that middle panel, uh, paint the whole thing black, then I'll re-put it in the laser and engrave it. So I'm not engraving now, so I'll just turn off the engraving layer and I will do the same thing I've done with all the other ones, copy it, paste it into my workspace. Oh yeah, just right-click paste. Uh, chuck it there, save it as a DXF, import it to the laser and cut it. on the white front panel. Still got its protective paper on obviously. Okay, so I'm done with the laser and this is the end result. Um, this is the main three parts of each panel in the entire cockpit. Um, this is the rear one that the switches, LEDs, everything gets bolted to or mounted in. This is just a light diffusing panel and this is a the front panel which will be painted black and then engraved with the text. So these two here get glued together with a uh, acrylic cement. So it, it actually met, melts the acrylic and fuses it together. So it'll be one solid strong piece. Uh, and then that one would get put on there. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just quick, give them a quick brush over with sandpaper uh, and I'll glue these two together. I use this. It's a solvent cement, so like I said, it um, it melts the plastic and fuses the two together. Once they're glued, you'll never get them apart. It's like having one solid piece of plastic. I use the water thin stuff, and I just use a syringe and basically pull it on, then pull it on that one, put that on, move it around, and get it in the right spot and leave it. it, it it's really fast setting. It'll take probably two minutes until it's solid. Um, I won't videotape it, though, because it's not very good stuff this like healthy so i need to glove up and i need to okay so here's the front and the middle panel glued together in our one solid piece um here's the back panel and that will get bolted on with them four screws like that um there's one more step i take before i get to wait for it to focus before i get to painting this and engraving it and that is drilling the back of it Okay, so the LED backlights are you the LEDs I use for backlighting are these and they get mounted from the rear of this panel and you can see that they will stick out a little bit there. So I just need to drill a pocket into the back of the white one into the back of that diffusing panel, which also gives you a nice even light spread. Um, now I was previously 
engraving that in the laser but it just takes so long and it's just so much easier to screw these together and then run a three mil drill bit really softly in the back of them it's just so much easier to do that and So I've just got it on a bit of cardboard that I always use to spray paint stuff. Um, it's just held on there with some double-sided tape. Uh, I also remembered to mask up the bit that I don't want paint to get on. That's where the knob backlights. The paint I use is this uh, ordinary paint you get in a hardware store. Um, I learned very early on to use good quality paint. So spend the extra money and get a good brand. The ones you get that cost like a dollar a can will not give you a good result and the they don't lay as well at all this is the best I've used so far okay so here's the top panel uh, painted four coats of that spray paint uh, and it's all good to go uh, it doesn't matter that it's not perfect on the back obviously because none of that will be seen it also doesn't matter that it's not perfect about around the uh, part that I've left for the knob to backlight because none of that will be seen so what it's time to do now is to engrave it and I'll show you how I do that Okay, so to prepare the laser for engraving instead of cutting, uh, I have lowered the bed. Uh, it's not powered, obviously. I just undo four bolts on the side here, and I've got some little uh, marks on the on the legs that show me where to drop it. So I've dropped it about five mil. The reason I drop it for engraving is because I put this scrap bit of MDF on there, which I will tape down so it doesn't move. Uh, and you can see I've used it for a whole bunch of different panels, this bit of scrap. Uh, basically, all I do is very lightly cut out the outline of the panel so I've got a reference point then I put the panel down in that outline so I know it's exactly in the right spot and then I run the engraving program uh, this just gets held down with masking tape and then I double I use double sided tape to hold the panel straight so it doesn't move when the laser is moving uh, so I will set that up now All right so here we are in laser CAD you can see I've um, got the top of the fuel panel laid out where I want everything uh, if you look over here, you can see all the colours are doing the, an engrave at 280 powers 15. And I've got the outside, which will be the um, outline of where the panel has to sit as a cut layer. It's really fast because I'm not looking to cut through the wood. I just want to mark it so I know where to lay the panel out. So I'll just turn off all these for now. And I'll get it to just do the cut. On the machine I'll download that and I'll head over to the machine and run that and it should just give me the outline on the MDF So it obviously looks like a massive mess right now because there's so many lines but you'll see once you actually put the panel down in the right spot you can work out which lines are for that panel and it's pretty easy. So I can just find where the outline is, get it in the right spot, I'll put some double sided tape on it. Now I know that the machine knows where the panel is sitting so all I have to do is run the engrave uh, and it will engrave it into the panel. Okay so now that the panel is in the machine and is taped down in the right spot I will just turn off the outside cut and turn on all the engraves and I'll run it
Okay, so there it is complete, the front panel anyway. Um, coming to the laser, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Uh, what I'm going to do now is solder up the backlight circuit. Basically, there's a 3mm sorry, three millimetre LED in each of these little holes. I have them in groups of three. So there's three in series with one resistor, uh, and then all of those are parallel. Okay, so here it is with the backlight um, complete. I have soldered it all up. As you can see, it's very, very simple. It's just the three millimeter green LEDs, uh, all soldered up together. And then I just use these um, cut up dew point connectors to connect it to the power supply, which will be on the same backlighting circuit with the dimmer in the cockpit. Uh, you can see it all works. Nice and easy. So what I'm going to do now is just cover the back of the panel with some self-adhesive vinyl. Basically, I'll put that down like that, hit it with a heat gun so it's um, stuck on there. And it will uh, insulate the back of the panel so there will be no exposed wiring that could foul on other cables in the pit. And it will keep the LEDs in place without me needing to glue them or um, bolt them in at all. So I'll do that now and then the panel is pretty much complete. Okay, so here's the rear of the back panel. You can see that I've put the vinyl over the LED backlight circuit, and you can see how the LEDs are at the front here. That means there's basically, I'll turn it on, there's almost no bleed out the back, so you don't get, um, especially in panels like this where there's large gauges in the middle, you don't get any of this green backlighting bleeding into those gauges that you can see from the front. You can see how bright they are. Perfect. All right. Now all I've got to do is bolt it together. This panel's really easy. All it's got in it is one push button switch and one uh, eight position rotary switch, and the rest is all the gauge. I'll do um, I'll do a video on the gauges later because they're a little bit more complicated than this. All right. So there it is, sort of illuminated with the knob. You can see it's pretty bright, so the camera doesn't pick it up. You can see how the arrow on its own illuminates. And there's a quick test of the backlight on that um, fuel gauge. Looks pretty cool, I reckon. We can't come